Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of B is for Boat. We're out here working on my boat. Why you may ask? Because about a month ago, I got a phone call on my birthday saying your boat has sank. And it did, it sank. So we called a dive team, we got it refloated, we pumped all the water out, cleaned it up, and the first step we did was get the engines just running again. After we got the engines running, we dried everything out, we reworked a lot of the electronics, and we checked everything that was broken on the boat. We gave you guys a, a detailed report in the last episode of everything that didn't make it through the sinkage. In today's episode, we're all about fixing all that stuff, replacing everything that we can that was in stock and that we could order. We're gonna replace all of those things, then we're gonna tune the engines and take the boat out for the first time since sinking. The goal is to get this thing out on the water for the first time since it sank. Just basically verifying that it can still boat around and do boat stuff. That's what's in store for today's episode. Let's get to it. All right guys, to get started, we're actually gonna jump you right back into some work we just did at the shop. All right, we're back at the shop. Now, uh, right behind me, you'll see our new purchase. You're gonna be, this is a long story why we're even going down this road, but it, it all makes sense eventually. So I just, uh, Oscar and I just picked this up off of Facebook Marketplace. This is like a, a virtually brand new seven horsepower. What is the brand on this thing? You might think it's a Yamaha, but it's a Hankai. Yep. Anyways, it's a specimen. It looks great. And this is a seven horsepower motor and it costs only $250. And then what I had in my storage at the old shop, a dinghy! This thing did float the last time I tried it out. Uh, as you can maybe kind of see by the amount of sand on it, that was in the ocean. So why are we building a second boat, you might ask? Okay, so we need to tune our engines. We need to get them tuned up and running perfectly good. Cannot tune the engines inside the marina because if something goes wrong and the engines run rich, it'll spit a little bit of gas part particles and stuff in the exhaust. It spits it out the exhaust and then it makes the marina look really bad if there's gas on the water. It's like a, it's an absolute no-go. It's something we can't risk. So we need to move the boat out into the river um, and we could tune it out there. Just a lot less um, liability, ton less liability. So I figured, you know, we could hire somebody to tow us out there or we could try a seven horsepower alpha motor and a dinghy to tow a 26,000 pound, 44 foot long yacht. What could go wrong? All right, we're gonna test inflate the dinghy and test mount the motor. <laughs> my dinghy. Now, uh, this didn't actually come with the boat. I got this in a, in a business deal. Uh, I don't know, like second year BS for build or something. Anyways, uh, we, we filled it up and we've got some, got some leakage around the valvage and I think it's caused by the sand. So we're gonna have to uh, unfill it. It's similar to sinking a boat actually. It's just... <laughs> it's soapy water. Yeah, soapy water, yeah. Miss you, Chris Fix. Can't wait to see you. Oh, by the way, I'm going to visit Chris and Tavares when I'm out uh, there. I'm driving in the Freedom 500. I guess I haven't made that announcement on the YouTube channel. I did on Instagram. I'm driving in the Freedom 500 over at the Freedom Factory. First place gets a helicopter, so I'm, I'm taking it very seriously. I've practiced driving left a lot, um, and uh, I'm, really, I'm really excited. So I'll give you guys more information. Tickets are already sold out, but you can live stream it, and I'll give you more information as we get a little bit closer to that. Uh, but it's going to be really... Really fun. So, uh, but I am gonna go see Chris Fix and Tavares, so let me know if you, there's anything you guys want me to maybe film for the, the second channel or anything else like that. Oh, and while I mentioned the second channel, I'll put a link right here down in the description to our second channel. It's just kind of behind the scenes stuff, and a lot of people had asked me to get more in depth on the insurance and what happened with the boat, how much money we're expecting to get from the insurance company, and why I feel like I kind of got scammed and all that good stuff. So we will be talking about that, uh, and there's an episode right now on the second channel. And so now, we deflate the boat. Dude, this thing is going to rip. I'm excited. So it says on the back here, uh, the uh, the official documentation board, uh, it wants max of four horsepower. So we're almost doubling that, which is straight up the beast for build alley. Uh, I'm so excited about this. Like this is a great Facebook marketplace find. This thing's pretty much brand new. Uh, what was the story? Didn't the guy say he bought it for his boat and just couldn't get his boat going quite fast yeah, enough? He said he had like a big section in between the boat, the motor and the, where he sat. So he just couldn't reach it. 
Oh yeah. Oh. Just got rid of it. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much brand new. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and fire it up for you. Uh, it's looking like, as far as its height, like going into the water. I think we're. That's. I don't know enough about boating and boats and stuff, but um, I'm gonna learn. Uh, but uh, that that looks pretty good to me. Uh, we figured out some stuff with the forwards and the reverse and the gearing and everything like that. Um, Oscar's gonna go ahead and give it a start, uh, unless it's is it too high up or? Uh, I'll try. Yeah. So, There's a primer, right? Yep. And two, three. Look out, grind hard coming. Grind hard coming. <laughs> <laughs> grind hard plumbing. Here we come. Yeah, sure. Nice! That was a big hole too. Yeah, this is a four stroke uh, motor, so it's nice and it's quiet. Um, so, are we in gear right there? No, it's a neutral. It's a neutral? It's okay, so let's give it this is forward. There we go. That's neutral, and that's uh, reverse. Oh man, I'm so excited for this thing. Nice. Yeah, you want to give it some revs? Nice. Sounds like a lawnmower. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good lawnmower. A seven horsepower lawnmower. And you kill it right here. Yeah. Cool. cool. Dude, this is, this is awesome. All right, so we're going to leave this for the rest of the day and make sure it doesn't deflate on us before we take it to the water tomorrow. I want to take a quick second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Carly. So everybody has seen just your standard OBD2 scanner, but this is much, much more. You get manufacturer level diagnostics. You get customization through coding. You can get live data, which I'm going to show you in a second, to diagnose a multitude of different problems and service functions. So there is a ton of stuff packed into this guy and the app, which I'm going to show you right now. Let's go ahead and jump into my Range Rover and take a look. So like I said before, the Carly app and scanner can provide manufacturer level diagnostics, coding customization, and access to hidden information inside your car. And you always wanna check the website to see what works with your car. So this is my daily driver and it's had a few issues here and there and I've used Carly on it in the past. So it's got my history here and I'm gonna go ahead and run a diagnostic scan to see where we're sitting now. While this is scanning, I wanna mention something else I think is really cool is, is Carly's very DIY focused. It's The idea is help keep you out of the dealership and let you work on your own car and help you uh, diagnose issues, help you make maintain your car's health and help you unlock really cool features inside your car that you may not know were ever there. All right, my diagnostic scan is complete and I'll be honest, it doesn't look good. So the red ones are the ones that I really focus on. Those are critical. So on the critical one, we only have one and that's the catalytic converter, which I actually already knew about. My catalytic converter is a little special. But something I didn't know about is the transfer case is mad. It says that we've got an actual changeover solenoid, which is voltage is high. And then it says that we've got some system voltage unstable. So let's go ahead and jump into the smart mechanic and see what it's got to say about that. So it says that's related to under voltage or over voltage issues potentially in the car. And now that I think of it, some of these codes are stored in the history of the vehicle and I actually know why we would be having voltage issues. So that code was old and why we had voltage issues is about two months ago, my alternator went out and now I've got a new alternator, but it makes an interesting sound and that's why I'm gonna jump into another feature of the Carly, which is the live data. Cause I wanna read the live data on my alternator and see how it's doing. I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. And let's look and find the voltage. So right here we can see our battery voltage, a nice 14 volts. Uh, and that means it's running well and it's charging up the battery like it should. I had heard some sounds and I thought it might have been fluctuating, but it's holding very nice and steady. And I think everything's good. So guys, if you don't already have Carly, I highly suggest it. Check out the link in my description right now to pick yours up. And if you use my code Bs for build 24 you can save 15% off of your Carly order. Huge thanks to Carly for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to it. Guys, we made it down to the boat. We put the boat on the boat. Uh, we forgot to bring enough life jackets to be able to go test the boat, but we will, we will definitely do that shortly. We got a ton of new stuff and another harebrained idea to start off this day. We're gonna start working on the fuel system fuel water system. So the idea is now we're gonna build an inline fuel puller outer of the tank, run her through the filters and drop it back in the tank system. A loop, a filtration loop system. So I bought fuel pumps, I bought filters, I got hoses. Let's see what we can construct. All right guys, sorry, I apologize by the time I got done doing this, it got a little dark, but here's what we got going on. This is a small feed line from our fuel cell. That's a return line from our to our fuel cell. Um, that is the 300 gallon fuel cell that may have water in it. We're not really sure. Uh, it runs from the feed line up into an inline fuel pump into a 
uh, fuel filter and water separator and another fuel filter water separator then back down and then into the tank what i hold right here is a little switch that runs the uh runs all the way back to our batteries back there that will turn this on oscar's wor uh, working on wiring up that battery and then i'm going to hit this switch and i'm really going to hope that this fuel pump can prime that far because it's uh that's a challenging run to do that's like four feet vertical uh but it'd be great if it could because i don't want to have to prime it myself you might also be able to hear there's a little bit of a pump running we are doing another oil change on the engines i think we're going to be on our last oil change that was like three or four oil changes total to get all the water circulated out of the engines this one was a lot better but that one had a little a little too much oil in it for our liking oh yeah yeah oil's good water's not uh so we good oscar yeah all right i'm gonna flip this all right let's see it's making sounds there we go that's interesting and then we're over here and i guess we're now going back into the tank um what's gas and what's water who knows all right guys it's the next day and uh i learned something we drained a little bit of this out of here and uh as you can see it doesn't look very gasoline-y and you would be right it's water it's like pretty much 100 percent water it is definitely not even flammable um it's water so that means that you know th these are going to go down to the bottom of the tank gas and water separate so you're going to see that the gas is always going to be floating above the water gas is going to stay up here water's going to be down there so this is going to be pulling from the bottom of the tank it's going to be pulling up the water that's in the tank it's a lot more than i thought it was going to be so rather than trying to separate it a cup at a time we're just going to start pumping the gas out of the tank into some buckets well sorry i we're not pumping gas out into buckets. We're actually pumping the water out into the buckets. Um, and then uh, if we start getting into pure gas or what looks like pure gas, then we can start running it through these gas water separators and uh, have a shot at getting it really, really clean. But for now, we got to probably got a lot of water in there. So got to do our best to get it all out. Let's give it a shot. I don't know why we got the lighter so close to the uh, gas water mixture it's because honestly uh, off film i tried to light it on fire last night and uh it doesn't so this is just all water um you i wish you could smell it on the camera but it's uh it literally smells like nothing it just smells like a little kind of skunky water and um well we'll let you know how much we get out of here i estimated when i when i popped the cap off of the fuel cell it looked like it was at about half which is where we thought we left it as far as gas goes so you know we could have I don't think we have a hundred gallons of water in there. Definitely not, but we could have 20, 30, 40. I'd be surprised if it was over 50, but let's see. All right, that's five gallons of water down. All right, that's 10 gallons of water. We brought five of these total, so let's hope we don't fill them all. These all have to go to the recycling center and it is such a pain. So imagine after we fill these all up, we have to take a huge break, put these all in the cars and trucks and drive into the recycling center and drive all the way back. It takes a long time. Well, forgot to record the next one, but that's 15. Great weather day we got today. Nice, windy, rainy. If it's high winds like this, we're not gonna be able to use the dinghy idea because the winds will overpower the dinghy for sure. Uh, anyways, we filled up uh, five five gallon buckets. So we gotta take those to the recycling center, do another round before it's too dark. Starting off this day a little bit differently in the most dangerous parking garage in the world, which is always gonna be a hospital parking garage because Let's just say there's a lot of people that aren't very good at driving in these things. Anyways, those of you that have been watching the channel for a long time know that uh, I had cancer, cancer diagnosis about two and a half, well, about three years ago. Uh, did surgery, did treatments, did blah, 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 but I'm still in a phase where I have to uh, continue uh, with monitoring, which is just like, you know, keep looking at my body, doing scans and hoping I don't have any uh, any like reoccurrences or the cancer doesn't uh, didn't spread too far because I had a very very dangerous um, very intrusive uh, cancer that spread to my lymph nodes anywho very happy to tell you guys all that um, I, I just went in I got scans I got my skin all checked over I got everything and the results have came back and they're all perfect so that is wonderful um, two and a half years of cancer free for this guy we should hear right before SEMA is my benchmark for year three so looking forward to that i'm very this the, it, getting those results back is always such a big booster to my life and just my 
mental and everything. So it's so awesome. And I'm so excited to um, link up with the guys and get back to it. So there have been good things going on with gas. I'll go show you. All right, back of the boat. And you can see that our gas water separators look a lot more gas and a lot less water. And by that, I mean 100% gas. So here's the story of what the guys accomplished while I was at the hospital. What happened was we pumped all of the water out of the system just from this uh, this feed line right there. Pumped it all out, got it into our buckets, got it out of there until it started coming out gas. But then once in a while, the boat would have a little rock to it and a little bit of water would start to show up in our water gas separators. And that is because of something down here. It's very hard to see, but the hole of the boat is shaped like a V and the fuel cell follows the hole of the boat. So the bottom of the fuel cell is actually a V. The gas in the water, the gas sits very well on top of the water. So what happened is we pumped from wherever that feed line is, we pumped out to there and got all that water gone. But once it got right down there, if the boat went this way, the water's gonna go that side, the boat would go this way and we'd start picking up water again. So that was no good. We had to get further down into that fuel cell. So we knew we had to come up with an idea that could get us to the bottom of the fuel tank. So that was copper. We went down to the hardware store and got some copper tubing, put it through the fuel uh, level sending area, and then ran it down straight to the bottom where we got another three to four gallons of water out of there before it became pure gas. And now we've been running it through here to check and we're pure gas. So I'm happy with this. Um, the research that I've done and everything that I've seen shows that very much gas and water don't really stay mixed. So I think if we got the water out of this gas, this gas is going to run well. So right now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go off of our auxiliary fuel cell. We're going to detach that. We're going to reattach our whole standard fuel um, flow and the, the way that it has always worked. And we're going to start running these engines off of the fuel tank. While Oscar's working on plumbing, and I'm helping, look, I'm holding this. Uh, I wanted to tell you guys about another thing that we did a little bit off camera, which was we added ballast to the back of the boat. So we removed some really, really heavyweight AGM batteries, two from that side and two from that side. We replaced them with a lot lighter batteries and we might replace even more with even more lightweight lithium ion batteries. So we needed to add some more ballast because the boat was getting a little too front heavy looking and I was worried that it was gonna affect the flow of the exhaust. So we used a laser level and we actually checked our height to the world from the, uh, the exhaust manifold and going out. We have plenty of height on these engines. They're still flowing downhill. That's all great, but I still wanted to even out the boat. So we just started packing bags of concrete back here. This is a trick that somebody told me about that had also had one of these boats and did a, did a gas engine swap on them. And, uh, so the hope is that these bags of concrete will soak up moisture and stuff from the air and, and different areas. And there's actually kind of, honestly, it's Oregon, there's plenty of rain around and they'll turn into big rocks and uh, basically help be permanent ballast in the back of the boat. So they're packed in there. We've got 14 bags of concrete back there. And uh, let me jump outside the boat and I'll show you how well it works. So don't mind Peter there, he's pressure washing. He's one of the guys that helped us get the boat out of the water. But when we look at our, the amount that we're out of the water from the front to the back, we're almost perfectly even, which means we're much better than when we uh, than where we were when we actually originally did the engine swap. So that that little bit of ballast really did help get us a lot lot closer to level, and it's so much so much better than how we were like two days ago. All right, guys, we are all the way plumbed up as far as our original fuel tank with the original gas that did sink is plumbed back up into the engines. This is going to be quite interesting, but I think it'll be just fine. I want to show you something that is going to impact our day quite a bit. There, it's a little bit hard to see, but uh, you kind of see that there's like a little bit of rippling off of this post and uh, uh, off of this buoy. There is so much water flowing this way. The marina's got a crazy amount of flow to it right now that is uh, pushing everything this way. We definitely cannot tow with the dinghy when there is this much current. I've never even seen this much current in the river um, happening. So we're not going to be able to uh, to use the dinghy uh, to pull this out. But um, we do have another idea, which we're going to execute right now. 
Okay, we have two problems that we're approaching here. Is we're trying to tune these engines. When they run rich, we're getting gas coming out the exhaust. The other problem that we have, and I don't know if we mentioned this, is we put brand new O2 sensors on each engine and we blew them both nearly immediately. That means we have too much water in our exhaust for whatever reason. And uh, well, it just happened. We don't really know why and we need to work around it. Since the time that we built these little extender doohickeys, we've never blown an O2 sensor. So it was very weird. My thoughts is maybe we didn't clear enough of the water out of the exhaust system before we plugged them in and ran them. So um, there's kind of a solution for both of these things and it is to build in a switch into our raw water pump so we can turn them on and turn them off. The raw water pumps pump uh, the water from outside in the marina up through that heat exchanger and it comes back out the exhaust. So the other thing that that's gonna do is stop us from shooting any excess gas out the exhaust because the water was really the delivery mechanism that was pushing it out into the marina. So we can definitely start tuning these things and running them and we're gonna have less likelihood of blowing our O2 sensors and we'll have virtually no likelihood of spitting any gas into the marina. So it's kind of a win-win. The only downside is we can't run them for a super long time or you'll heat up these rubber hoses past their um, acceptable temperature. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna put an inline switch into the raw water pump so we can turn them on when we want and turn them off when we want. And then we can start plugging in the computer and uh, getting a little tuning going. So if you guys wanna see what's going on here, a lot of what I'm looking at, the engine is running great now. These are a lot of the parameters. Uh, learning status is that it's, it's making some changes and you can see the learn amount is 3%, which is not much. Closed loop, that means it's making its own changes on the fly. That's percentage is 2%, so it's really close. This is a target air fuel ratio, and then that's what it's actually reading. So we're right there in the target. The fuel table shouldn't look like this. This is really brutal because I was working on just this section. So what you do later is you call it smoothing it out and you make it kind of have a linear a, a flow to it so you don't have these big drop-offs, these big large changes. But also, the system, if you drive the boat enough, will actually just figure it all out for you too. But what we got going on now is now that we're running uh, as stoichiometric, so we're not shooting gas out the exhaust, we're not doing anything bad to the marina, which is great. We've got the water pump re-engaged, and uh, so that's keeping the engine temperature good. Manifold air, coolant temperature, yeah, it's at 179, that's perfect. So all this stuff is really, really good and we're very, very happy. That is, yeah, that's enough for me to be really happy with this left engine um, being 100% back. So now we're gonna go ahead and work on the other guy. While working on that, um, Coast Guard radio, I really wanna go out today. So this is our, this is our uh, radio that can call it, like you can hail the Coast Guard and stuff like that. Standard boat radio. Uh, we lost it in the, in the uh, sinkage. So we got a new one. Let's go ahead and get it installed. In the last episode, we mentioned about how our stereos had a really good run at being waterproof. They did not like being fully submerged. So we picked up these guys. Um, I'm sure a lot of you people that have shopped for stereos in the last uh, decade know about this, but they make ones that don't take CDs anymore because um, nobody has CDs anymore. And that's pretty cool. They're really cheap. I think this is like 60 bucks. And Boss actually does a lot of uh, boat stereo stuff too. So. Although this isn't a boat stereo, <laughs> they do make them. So it's even more shallow, a little more shallow packaging. It's pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and uh, wire one of these in right there. I've got three of them. Jeez, did we buy three of those? Yes, there's three of them over <laughs> <There's> there. <three. laughs> um, I think maybe they were 30, uh, they're either 30 or $60 a piece. I can't remember, but um, they got all the features, all the functionality that we need. It's mainly just Bluetooth, but it's also got radio and it's got a USB charger and all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, we'll swap out that one for that one. I'm over here working on the exhaust. We got that one uh, fully installed, getting this one installed. Well, we got the stereo installed. It's getting a little dark, um, but it's got, it's got one minor problem. Uh, I'll give you one guess. Yeah, I think you nailed it. Anyway, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and test out this stereo and see uh, if it has the same problem, and then we'll come up with a solution. So we ran into a problem, but it's also a really good opportunity to learn more about the boat and keep making improvements. So it's kind of like a problem that's not really a problem. So here's the deal. The old stereo is a little different than the new stereo, but both stereos in general 
the issue was is that they were they're basically staying on so this one had an option to like go off but it never went fully off the other one doesn't have an option to go fully off it just runs um it just runs a clock it, it, that's like as off as it goes so we need to have a switch but what that tells us is this power that was running to this it goes directly like from the battery it does not care about anything inside the circuit board uh over there all of the switches over there none of them control the power that was going to the stereo or actually this uh weird 24 volt outlet there so that stuff's always powered up so here's what we're going to do to have less stuff that takes residual drain on this boat Oscar popped the face off of this uh, outlet bank here. And what this is, is 110 that uh, most likely doesn't work anymore. TV that I have no idea why they have a coaxial plug there. Some weird European thing, got no idea. And then a 24 volt uh, European style plug. Uh, none of that stuff gets used. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take this, uh, I'm gonna take this faceplate home. I'm gonna take measurements off of it. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is build another faceplate. It's gonna have two things. It's gonna have one, a switch that'll turn on and off the power that goes to the stereo. And then the, so it'll be like a stereo on off switch. And then the other uh, is I'll go ahead and put a uh, 24 volts um, to USB charger, just so we have another USB charger on the boat. Um, so it's actually doing stuff that will get used potentially rather than nothing. All right, guys, it is the next day and it is an absolutely beautiful day to get this boat out on the water. I mean, we're on the water, right? But, you know, actually go boating. So we've uh, we've got the deck down, so we've got some more space to work. Oscar and I are going to double team a few things. Oscar's going to uh, work on wiring in the stereo inside. I got some switches last night that are going to allow us to turn the stereo completely off. We're going to install a switch on this one, too. It's like the ignition for our car stereo, basically. Starting with the inside radio, let's see if we can get you some fuzz. Nope, that's copyrighted, okay. Um, and then the off switch, very good. We got the under seat stereo right here. Oscar, go ahead and flip the switch. And that's the clock and then power. Get you some fuzz. There we go. And probably the most important detail, this is the, uh, the radio that we can hail the Coast Guard with. That's Coast Guard channel, so that's all good. All right. We're gonna check the transmission fluid levels and then uh, fire this thing up and get out of here. Oh God, guys, I don't even really know how to explain what the last 24 hours have been like. So um, last clip, we were like, all right, we're ready to go. We're gonna, we're gonna back the boat out. And then we noticed like one of the engines looked like it was running a little rich, like a little bit extra uh, fuel. And so we're like, huh, let's take a look at that. And then I checked my air fuel ratios and both the O2 sensors just pegged, they were, on both engines they both like gave up oh that's really weird so then we started fighting with o2 sensors last night midway through last night i kid you not the o2 sensors just started reading perfectly again and everything got fine with o2 sensors super bizarre situation there so what i want to do and to, to to fix that is just get a really good tune on the boat that way if the o2 sensors go out later on down the road we can just keep using the tune that's on the boat um so to do that we got to drive the boat that's all we got to do just drive the boat around so that was kind of the goal for today is we we're going to go out and fix it that way and then we realized like there's a lot of extra fuel um coming out of the exhaust on this engine now that engine was working good but this engine's been a problem so oscar was feeling some of the cylinders and felt that a few of them were cold they were just like really really cold and that was strange and then we were just noticing way tons of extra fuel going through the system so We've got to take this intake manifold off and inspect our injectors. And both of us are thinking that at least one of these injectors is like stuck open or clogged or something and it's leaking fuel. So uh, we've got to get this uh, fixed ASAP. Um, we've turned off the fuel, so it's not like actually actively leaking, but it's when the engine's running and stuff, it's, it's leaking. And then that's causing extra fuel to go through the system and it can't read it because it's happening on that bank and the O2 sensors on that bank. So it's a very complicated problem, but we're gonna put every two of our brain cells together. We're gonna rub them together, These four brain cells use right. friction, and uh, make fire, baby. Wait, well, no fire, considering we got a gas leak, but you know what I mean. Alrighty guys, it's a new day. Uh, we've, we've missed our wonderful weather window. So it's now back to like, let's hope it doesn't snow on us type of weather. Um, 
the uh, intake manifold is back on. The new injectors are in. I've got the tune set up for the new injectors. Um, so what we're gonna go ahead and try and do now is get a good base fuel map, base idle on this engine so it can uh, run and function and uh, double check and make sure that we don't have any extra fuel coming off the exhaust and we'll be in good shape if we can get all those things dialed in. All of this wackiness where we've been seeing too much fuel going through the exhaust and everything, it, it, it would be solved in an instant if you had an O2 sensor on each bank. That'd be great, but we don't have that. So moving on, um, it's all been done at idle. And at idle, you have these guys right there. They're called idle air controllers. Um, and uh, well, they, they, help your, they help your engine idle. Uh, but if one of them was broken, so you can see we have one that's fully extended like that and one that is not extended like this. If one of these was broken, say like this one was stuck all the way open because of uh, sinking, you know, you can see some rust down in there. Um, that would limit the air going to one bank of the engine. And then if you don't have enough air and you have too much fuel, you run rich. And that could be what we were seeing. It's hard to know. Uh, it seems like a lot. Also our spark plugs look like hot garbage. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is uh, four new spark plugs, uh, a couple new uh, idle air controllers, and then we'll give it a test and see if we're in a better position. All right, guys, happy to say that it was the IAC. It was uh, it was stuck in a closed position, which was really bad. And uh, no, you know, no damage done to the engine because we weren't like running them and, and going full rip. Actually, when you got out of idle, that, that wouldn't matter anyways. But that was causing our problem of running too rich and we've got that solved. So game plan is we're gonna get two working O2 sensors, one in each engine and go boating. Go enjoy this wonderful Oregon weather. shut these down real quick we got the boat out on the water we got the engines tuned up we got this stuff running good I'm so stoked we got everything back we got everything back in shape man we got a boat again so cool I wish it could have been a better weather day I mean we're like full awning up and everything but we did it let's see if I can crash the drone into the uh, river trying to get a thumbnail shot <laughs> The drones on boats are dumb. All right, uh, if, you know, the wind is picking up. There's a storm rolling in. We got to get back into the marina. Back at the marina, home sweet home. The current was pretty strong, so parking was exciting. I'll say that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Now that we've got the boat and the powertrain and everything that the engines are tuned, everything's going well on the water. Um, we're going to be taking a break on this. We're going to work on our Lamborghini Murcielago build and our camper truck build, getting both of those things, um, wrapped up. If you're here specifically for Marine content, I current plan is after those builds, we're back on boats. So make sure you stay subscribed so you don't miss anything. Uh, we are officially definitely going to build a whole new from scratch bees for build boat it's going to be very very exciting i'm so stoked on it um and also when the weather turns around that's when we will be finishing out all the final touches on this boat meaning getting all the interior dialed in getting it all cleaned up furniture back in probably new furniture this year it's about time um just getting this thing all the way back to 100 thank you guys so much for watching thanks for being on this journey with me it was a really really sad time um, but luckily it looks like the insurance payout on this, uh, the, the, the loss that we took here and the hard work that we had to put in to fix it, we'll probably pay to fund our next boat. So that's pretty cool. Thanks for watching guys. See you on the next one. Peace. Come on.